chapter 6. I want to, I'm calling this divine alignment. God first. Divine alignment. Everybody say divine, divine. alignment. Divine. Now we, we, we just concluded, um, I guess it was a series, a kind of a series, talking about the fruitful life. In the last three weeks we talked about the favor of God. And uh, man, this is so good. And, you know, we're, we're in a place, man, I, we're seeing the favor of God. That some, some saints can grab hold of this thing, man. And it's just been some absolutely obnoxious things happening. Obnoxious in a good way. And so we're going to keep that going. I told you, this next six months, well, five months now, going to be way better than the previous. Now, some, some folks just started, decided to believe that. I mean, some of us might as well. We ain't got nothing to lose. <laughs> right? Amen. Okay, your enthusiasm is warming up. Uh, Matthew chapter six, please. I want to talk about this, and I want to read. I'm going to read a considerable amount of verses right now, and then I'm going to go into it. Verse twenty-five says, "Therefore I say to you, you know, not, I, I'm going to read it slow. Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life. <laughs> I'm telling you, a lot of folks worrying about their life." What you will eat, what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. It's not life more than food and the body more than clothing. Now, this is Jesus talking to those that have chosen to follow him. And he's talking to us today, the same thing. That a Christian has no business worrying about anything. If I'm worrying, I'm not believing. If I'm complaining, I'm not believing. But, but you know, I, I want to say this because sometimes, you know, we, 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 we can justify anything we want to do. But he said, don't worry about your life. So that means everything that, everything that concerns me, he said, don't worry. For me to worry is to be out of the will of God. For me to worry when he tells me not to is to... Is to be sinful, you know. Um, Lynn said the first message she heard when she came to the lighthouse 16 years ago. Well, actually, she wasn't even here yet. Somebody took it to her. It was a series I did on living worry free, and she said I need me some of that, and she's been here ever since. But I'm amazed at at, at the people that name the name of Jesus, but they worry and almost wear a badge of honor. Because they're worried. Now Jesus said, don't worry about what? No. Well, your life, so that includes everything. So, so and this is not my subject today, but let's just make a decision. Because it's a decision. I'm not, I refuse to worry. When the urge comes, when the temptation comes, no, I'm not taking it. I'm not worried. It's a decision. And if, I, and if I couldn't do it, he wouldn't tell me not to do it. Right? So everybody say, no worry. No worry. Be happy. Be happy. <laughs> okay. Now, okay, okay, let me, because that, not, that's not where I want to go talk about. Okay, verse uh, 26. Look at the birds of the air. They need to sow nor reap, nor gather in the barns. They don't store up anything, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valued than they are? Now, what's the view about worrying? can add one cubit to a stature. <laughs> Why do you worry about clothing? Look at the lilies of the field, how they grow. They don't toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and thrown, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? O oh, you. Of what? So if I'm worrying, I got little, little, little faith. It won't do anything. Verse 31, therefore do not worry. Saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For all these things the Gentiles chase after. They seek. But your Heavenly Father knows what you need. So, so he said, he, I know you need these things, but I still don't want you worrying about those things. Because people are like, well, I, gotta, I just got to have this. God knows you need it. He said, just don't worry about it. But, see, the kingdom of God. Seek what? 
What? First. Everybody say first. Because that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about divine alignment. Divine alignment. First denotes a second. Right? If there's a first, there must be a next or a second. There must be the other. So that's what I want to talk about today because... If if I'm out of if I'm out of divine alignment, stuff won't work like it's supposed to. If I'm doing something first that should be third, I can't get the benefits of the order. God is a God of order. And he is sovereign and he set it up this way. And I can I can decide I don't like the way he does it. I can say that, but it doesn't matter if I don't like his order. He sets the order. He has the exclusive right to tell me how to do something. And so he's telling me here about my life now. Once I come into the kingdom, I don't have to come in there. But once I come, I got to come as they say, correct. See, I don't have, once I come to the kingdom, I've just, I've just relinquished all of my opinions of what I think God ought to do this. Why, you know, I, I, oh, I didn't ask God the question, I asked myself. So why, why, God say, tie 10%, why 10%, why not 5? Why not 50? I'm glad he didn't say 50, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> but, but why? But I, it doesn't matter why. That's what he said. So I want to, I want to, I want to do this because this is a missing component of we're trying to get stuff, we're, we're, we're believing stuff, trying to get stuff to work, but, but with something might be out of order. And he says what? Okay, you with me, thank you. First. So, so as we go through this, I want you to think about it. Because. Because God says, seek ye first the kingdom and its righteousness. And then all this stuff that everybody, that everyone else is chasing after, it will chase right. you. So if it's not chasing me and I'm chasing it, somebody's out of order. So God sent me by here this morning to bring some order. No, because, it, and it's so easy. It's so easy. Think about it. Think about, I don't know, I don't know, you know, when, when during your, you know, and praise, I, I ain't, I'm not studying, I'm not concerned, I'm not thinking about anybody else. When I'm praising God, Amen. that's why I close my eyes, because cause I'm giving him my, my first. Amen. I didn't come here to, to praise God with my mouth and think about you. Right. Amen. God said, I want, I want your whole heart. I want you to, ha. Huh, he said, he said, some people pray me with their lips, but their heart is somewhere else. No, no. See, first, God, I'm, I'm first. You, my praise is to you. All of my praise is to you. And some people are like, well, what's the big deal? No, the big deal is, is he getting it or, is, or are we getting it? See, he received what's on my heart. And my first thing, I mean, man, it, I think the first thing we ought to do before we, when we get up is, is Father, bless you. Thank you. When? First. Yeah. Before, before you pull out the comforter, pull it back. Lord, thank you. And, and, and I want to get a first consciousness because, because in this world, and the Bible tells it, but, but and I see it even, even with saints, they're so busy chasing. Chasing. And God said, no, that will chase you if you put me first. That's a promise from God. It's a promise. It's a promise. This is old. This might sound old-fashioned. Go on and give your life to Jesus. Give it to Him, and, and, and give it to him. give Him all of it. Make Him a priority. He's the priority. Make Him a priority. Yeah, baby. I know. I'll talk to you, but I have an appointment. I have an appointment at eight o'clock. You do? Yeah. Ain't nothing open at 8 o'clock. I know, but I got an appointment. Who's your appointment with? Jesus. Put him on your, let him, let him ding your phone for, uh, you know, as a reminder. I'm serious. Because a lot of times we get so out of order. You ever see an elevator that's got a sign that, you know, out of order? And what? You don't even tell. You know, I ain't getting on that thing. I think if we can see in the spirit realm. 
a lot of us got stuff. You know, the elevator looked like it's working. But this sign, uh, angels got to pass over because there's a sign that says, out of order. But we're going to fix it this morning. Because what's the state? Is first of all, one, a sign that I'm out of order is I'm always stressing. I'm stressing. I'm worrying. And Paul said in Philippians 4, 6, have, don't have anxiety about anything, but in everything. By prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving. See, an unthankful person is out of order. Whew. Now, I know I've talked about this before, and it's simple, but, but you know, this is, God told me to talk about this because people are trying to get manifestation, and then when they don't get it, it's frustrating, and so they just, like, quit. But it's not that they're doing the wrong thing. It's just that they're doing it in the wrong place. Because you know how to give things priority. You know how to put things first. Just put God first. Don't give him leftovers. Hallelujah. Give him my praise. I'm, give, I'm not screaming for him. I'm not screaming. I'm not screaming for the Green Bay Packers. I'm screaming for Jesus. Okay? I mean, I go to, I go, well, I go to football games, but I'm, I'm cool with the games. But, but when I get in church, I get crazy. I'm a fan. Natic. How many fans? Okay, because he's first. Amen. So I made a point to, uh, okay, let's go through this. Um, do me, uh, give me a, a proper 3-6, please, in the um, message, by, uh, no, TLB, the Living Bible. Proverbs 3-6, look at this, it's on the screen. In everything you do, put God first, and he will direct you and crown your efforts with success. Look at that. Direct you, crown your efforts with success. I don't know what I should do right now. See, just, just putting him first resolved and solved a lot of, I don't know what to do now. And then he said, not only will I, will I, I direct you, but I'll crown you, your efforts with success. God, okay, God, this is not working, but I'm not going to, before I call and Google everybody and call all my friends, I'm gonna, I want to consult you. He said, acknowledge me and all your ways, and I will direct your path. So, Lord, I, you know what? Why is it that this job thing is not working? Why is it that I'm still unemployed? Why is it that I'm in a job? I thought I liked it, but I can't stand it. But I got to stay now because I'm hooked in. God, why is, why is my marriage, why is my marriage so dysfunctional? <laughs> I'm way off about what I'm talking about. But, but why, why are we still here? Why is it, is there no, no joy in this journey? It might be because he's over here and you're over here and he's not first. Lord, direct my step. Lord, show me. He promised he'd do it. We got promises. We, we have promises. If you acknowledge me in all your ways, I will direct your step. He'll show you where to go. He'll show you who to be with. He'll show you who to disconnect with. It, 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 is it simple? Okay. Glory to Jesus. Put me first. First. Not second. Not third. First. All right. So, I wrote this down. Accepting Jesus is easy. Following him is a totally different story. <laughs> because you accept it, but following him, I got to keep him following, follow, 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 following him. I got to, that means he got to be out front. And I got to, and he'll take you on some journeys that you know what, the GPS didn't even map out. He's like, Lord, why did we end up over here? Don't worry about it. Trust me. Now we we got I, 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 I got to see we're gonna start a series Wednesday on trust me but but why are we over here just trust me follow me follow me but you got to keep me ahead of you come here Prince put your Bible down so 
to stand here and look that way. So, um, you ever been in line going to buy something? And uh, you ever, uh, <laughs> oh boy, I won't bring that up because I might get heated. <laughs> you ever been in line and somebody just kind of like jump in front of you? Or somebody who worked there like, I know, favor, right? But it's good when it's your favor. <laughs> it's not good when somebody else's favor gets in front of you. But, but, um, but, okay, this is me. I mean, this is me. I'm Jesus. I'm Jesus. You didn't know Jesus was so good looking, did you? Okay. All right, I'm just playing. But, but, but that's me trying to get his attention so I can, I can get in front. Can I, can I get in front? Okay. All right. Well, pray God. I love you. I love you. I love you. <laughs> okay. 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 Now we we women on this mountain. My time and my time is for you to be over there. But but I can't I can't lead you. So can I get in front? You, 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 you. I I want to I want to get can can. Uh, I love him, but I'm gonna have to sit and watch him. I watch him suffer too. But I love him. Okay. No, you you now now you got some fallout, you got some collateral damage. Oh my thing though. I got some collateral damage here. Now now because you, you won't move some stuff coming coming off on your children. And I'm trying to I'm trying to guide you, but they following you. So now now you go through the mud, they go through the mud. I'm trying to get your so can you, can you, can, oh, now he wants to move now. <laughs> but see, but, but here's the thing. Whenever, whenever you realize I'm out of order, you just do this. Um, Jesus, okay, I want you to, I want you to step aside and say, hey, hey go ahead. Ah, oh, yeah, that feel good right there. <laughs> yeah. See, watch this now. Thank you, obedient one. See, it's not a matter of heaven or hell. Because he loves me while I don't listen to him or follow him. It's a matter of failure or success. It's a matter of peace and confusion. It's a matter of living long and strong or dying early. Huh? This is good? Oh, thank you. I really appreciate your comments. <laughs> But no, but, but that's what, and, and because he said, he said, because see, when you start chasing stuff, you're, we're, we're not designed to chase stuff. Because when we start chasing, you ever see those decoys? We start chasing decoys, and, and, and then we're like, oh, should we way off then? Because the enemy knows, he knows. So, he said, keep me first. All right, now. Yeah. Go with me to Second Chronicles chapter one. This is real simple today. It's not not gonna be before you very long. As the old folks used to say. Y'all remember they used to say that? Yeah. Then they start closing the message. And you ask how many doors on this thing, because they've been closing for thirty minutes. How many doors you got, Rev? <laughs> okay. Whew. Now, I want to, um, uh, I don't want, do I want to go there? Okay. God is saying this. There has to be, you know, when you come to the kingdom, there has to be adjustments made where it was all about you. Now it has to be all about me. He's not opposed to us uh, seeking other things. He says, just seek me first. And even seeking him first, help us to flush out the other things that we think we want. 
before we spend all of the energy, all the resources, all the money. He said, no, no, put me first. I'll help you as you seek the other things because it's okay, but just keep me first. And now there's a built-in um, uh, protection to help you as you move forward. Amen. Amen. So what we have to do, he says, he says, he said, can you, can you just make some adjustment and, and make me a priority instead of yourself a priority? Now, this is where a lot of the church overall is missed it because I want it to be about me. I want it to be about me. I want to do this. I want to do this. And not kingdom minded a lot of people don't care about what happened to the kingdom I don't care how, how what I do affects the kingdom a lot of people don't even think about it how what I do affects the kingdom of God whatever it's my thing do what I want to do now <laughs> but God has a God has oh man God has a y'all remember Cain and Abel, and the Bible says that, uh, I think it's Genesis 2 or Genesis 4, I think Genesis 4, where Abel brought his offering and God accepted it. Cain brought one and God rejected it. It was an offering. What was the problem? Abel, because God said, I want the first, first, first fruit. Abel brought the first fruit. Cain brought some fruit. Cain just picked the line. Here you go. Here you go, God. But Abel brought the first fruit. He's like, oh, no, I got to get God the best. And so, and so God came with to Cain and said, Cain, why are you frowning up? He said, why is your countenance all the?" He said, he, said, he said this. He said, if you had done the right thing, I would accept you. And God would not tell him to do the right thing if Cain didn't know what the right thing was. And so a lot of times, we try to just give God something instead of first. God is a God of order. So I can't take my tithe and go on vacation but send him a little $20 offering. No, I mean, you know, so, so God didn't, well, I, you know, I don't know, I don't know, but, 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 but he said no. He, he has an order to how do it. Even when we pray, if you le read what's called the, the, the Lord's Prayer, the model prayer, the first thing, it's a model. He said, cover these things. But the first thing he prays is, your will, you, the first thing we ought to pray about when we go into prayer, Lord, what do you, what do you want me to do today? What, what's up? What, what's up for me today? What, what's your assignment for me? You're the potter, I'm the clay. What do you want me to do? You're the shepherd, I'm the sheep. I follow the shepherd. God, what will you help me? Remember, I told you yesterday how, how one of the things we need to pray, God, and I, I pray this, Lord, send me somebody into my life. I prayed this this morning. Lord, send somebody in my life today that, that maybe they're, 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 they're being crushed by heartache and pain and pressure. Send somebody where, where you can demonstrate through me. Where, where, where I can make Jesus known. It ain't about me. Well, I can make you known because I got to come in your name. And they may not know about the name or how to use the name. I know how to use it. Bring me somebody in my life today. I don't care where it is. So he said, pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. That's be now he got your knees in there. Nothing. Because he talked about your daily bread, talked about your protection, talked about all that. It's in there, but it's it got to be in order. Am I doing okay? Yeah. Yeah, it's got to be in order. And so a lot of times people are praying out of the prayer. Oh, I ain't in my prayer answer. No, you're doing the right thing, it's, but it's out of order. You can have a combination. You know, you can have a combination. You got to get in. You have a bunch of numbers. And you can just go like this if you want to. And chances are, you know, unless you got it like that, you're not going to be able to open that lock. But you got the numbers. But you have to put them in. And that's the way the favor of God. When we talked about this last week, that's the way the favor of God just flows uninterrupted when you stay in order. 
Okay, now, Second Chronicles chapter 1. Thank you, Jesus. Man, I'm getting blessed. I know you are too. Okay, on that night, God appeared to Solomon and said to him, Ask, what shall I give you? When was the last time God asked you, <laughs> What do you want me to give you? Okay, thank you for your response. Look, look at verse 10. <laughs> Another path. I, I'm thinking about it. Okay. Verse 10. Now give me, his Solomon's request, now give me wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people. For who can judge this great people of yours? And God said to Solomon, because this was in your, everybody say heart. Mm. Because this was in your heart, and you have not asked for riches, or wealth, or honor, or the life of your enemy. Think about it. a lot of times what people pray, probably not you, but first thing they ask for, Lord, I need some more money, I need a job, I need a better job. Lord, I need favor. You know, Lord, Lord, I need you to take care of my enemies, they're on my nerves. And Lord, I need to live long. But Solomon didn't ask for any of that. He asked for what? Wisdom and knowledge for yourself that you may judge or serve my people over whom I made you king. Now look at what God said. Verse 12. Wisdom and knowledge are granted to you and I will give you riches and wealth and honor. That sounds like seek ye first the kingdom and all these things will be what? All Solomon was concerned about is these people of yours. I need, I need the wherewithal to minister and to serve these people of yours. He didn't ask for a pay raise. He didn't ask for, for, for new contracts. He said, God, he said, God, give me something. I need, give me ability to serve your interests. And then God said, well, oh, shoot. I will give you riches, wealth, honor, such as none of the kings have had who were before you, nor shall have after you. So my, my, what I'm talking about today is when I can get in divine alignment, when when my consciousness is on God's interests, how I can serve and be an instrument for God to help somebody else. That's God's interest. God is all about people. And, and we have been, okay, we have been saddled with selfishness. Saddled with selfishness. Just mine, my four, no more. My name is Jimmy. I take all you give me. And, and saddled with selfishness to the point to where, you know, God's like, I'm looking for somebody that I can use and flow through, but ain't nobody, they, ain't nobody, you know, they, they, they trying to, they too busy trying to get, I'm trying to get mine. Well, that's, I'm telling you how to get yours. The devil wants the people on the sideline. You know what people on the sideline do? They talk about people that's in the game. They nitpick about people that's in the game. And <laughs> so, so he said, he said, so I cannot. He said, you, because you're getting involved in other people's lives, I can get involved in your life. And what everybody else is, is busting their heart and breaking their back to, to obtain, I'll just bring it to you. It'll just flow. Now that's one thing, you know, uh, 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 I ain't going to get her name the second servant, but that's one of the key. I told her, I said, one of the things that you've done since I've known her, and I, I got a whole thing that we'll read off the second servant, she has never not made it about other people. Even when she had cancer, mm -hmm. she never not made it about other folks. 
I, I was telling her, girl, you need to slow down. No, I know my healing is in the releasing. Come on. Amen. I'm telling you. And so a lot of us, we're like, you know, I ain't trying to be bothered with nobody. That's, that's not Christian. That's, right. that's not, I'm trying to find a real politically correct word. Because I know that it's God's order. And this is a classic because here's Solomon saying, God, I want this for your people. Show me how to be a blessing outside of myself. Divine alignment is when I can stay, God, your will be done in my life. Now, whatever your will be done in my life, whatever that entails me, I know you got to flow through me. This is not the Red Sea, the, the Dead Sea. Y'all know what the Dead Sea is? The Dead Sea, we've been over there. And, and nothing lives in it. You can float. You can float on the Dead Sea. You can't even sink in the Dead Sea. There's no life in it. You can't even sink in it. You just jump in it and you just right there. And there's no life in it because, because there's no outlet. And the reason, the reason why everything, see, stuff has, for life to be flowing, there's got to be an in, inlet. Is that a right word? And an outlet. See, God doesn't, God told Abraham, he said, Abraham, I'm going to bless you and you're going to be a blessing. Right? Now, oh, maybe I ought to go over there. Um, hold on a second. Let me see if I want to go over there. Uh, okay. Uh, remind me of that, okay? I'll talk about it in a minute. When you can only focus on what others can do for you and what you can get out of something, corruption sets in your heart. And it becomes the dead sea. No life can flow out. And then you get, not you, but people, just listen to people. They get bitter. They get super critical because there's no life. There's nothing but dead stuff in there, dead man's bone. Well, he said, he said unless, unless there's life flowing out of me, unless I'm put on this earth to be a benefit outside of myself, somebody's supposed to be benefiting from my existence. Well, that's divine alignment because God ain't coming down here and doing stuff and ministering to people. He's ministering, but he's ministering through us. Divine alignment. He said we're workers together with him. See, God is looking for how can I use you? Well, I don't have much that God can use. That's exactly you, the perfect candidate. See, the one who doesn't think they have anything are perfect for God to use because you're not full of yourself. Yeah, God, God, he loves it when you say, God, I don't know how to do this. He's like, fine, good. I just need your availability. I don't need you to tell me what to do, tell me how to do it, and tell me how smart you are. I'm not impressed with your smart. I'm impressed with your obedience. Yeah. And so, and what I'm telling you today, when we talk about the favor, but the way to get it just overtaking you, overwhelming you, and have you scratching your head is to get in divine alignment. You got something. If you're born again, he puts something in you for somebody else. It's not all for you. It's not all for you. It's, and, and, and he set you here. He set you here in Anchorage. He set you here in this church. He set you in your job. You're planted. God, God planted you. He planted you. Secret Asia. To impact somebody. Oh, hallelujah. Okay. So, so Abraham, no, not Abraham. We're not, I don't think I'm going to go over there. No, no. But Solomon said, Lord, it, it, God said, Solomon, it was in your heart. It was in your heart to do this. Now, you know, we, we talked about this extensively. But remember, God said in 1 Samuel 16, I don't look at people like you do. I don't look at man outward. God goes straight to your heart. And he's looking at motives and priorities to determine who he's going to raise up. My heart tells on me. My heart speaks to God about what I really believe and what I really think. My heart does that. 
And that's what God is judging. He said, his eyes run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are loyal toward him. He'll show himself strong, mighty. But he's not going to look. He's not looking at what I'm saying. He's not looking at what what where I go to church. He's looking at my heart. He's looking at my heart. He said, Solomon, it's in your heart to do this. You want to. You want to be an instrument of God. And this is how God raises people up. This is how God, see, this is how the, the perpetual, the perpetual gets on your life. God, man. And so when it's in your heart to be a blessing, it, 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 it goes that way. I mean, it starts at the house. I want to be a blessing to my family. I want to be a blessing to my children. I want God, use me. Use me to raise up champions for you. Use me, Lord. Use me to impact my, my, my siblings. They don't know about this. Use me, God. God, I'm available. God. Lord, use me in my church. I know I got a big office over there, but, but when I come in here, I'm just Earl. You know, Earl. Everybody, everybody Earl. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody missed or nothing. Everybody just Earl. Because, because I'm no better than you. You're no better than me. But thank God we're not what we used to be. But, but we're family. And so, so I have something that, I can, that you can use through me, that you can do through me to impact somebody. It's in my heart. What's in your heart this morning? What's in your heart? Whew. Divine alignment. I love this, man. So, so if I can... Um, if I can get my heart right, I can get my life right. <laughs> if I can get my heart right, I can get my life right. Man. All right. I'm trying to decide if I want to go. No, I don't want to go here. Uh, I, I'll talk through it. You go to Matthew 25. When God told, God told Abraham, he said, I'm going to bless you that you, and you will be a blessing. Well, go ahead and get there because I want, I want you to look at me when I say this. I want you to, I want your undivided attention. This is so simple. Okay. Remember, God said, Abraham, I'm going to bless you and you want to be a blessing. Now, here's the statement. It is your commitment to be a blessing that determines the level and flow of blessings that God brings into your life. Say it again, Pastor. It is your commitment to be a blessing that determines the level and flow of blessings that God flows into your life. i said one more time. It is your commitment to be a blessing. The Abraham, and we, and we read a lot about Abraham the last couple of weeks, but it's, it's his commitment to be a blessing that determines the level of blessing that God continues to flow into his life. God, I want somebody to benefit from this. I, you know, don't get me wrong. God put the promises in there to, to take care of us, but the order is you'd be a blessing to somebody else. Hallelujah. Okay, Matthew 25, please. We're, 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 we're heading for the runway. But good seat belt, put your tray up. Trade, trade up right and move them seats. I don't know why they do that. Anyway, let me stop. What's important to God, y'all? People. And a lot of people have lost sight of that. They lost sight of it. 
and we can get so consumed with what we're dealing with that we lose sight of that, which is the door to our breakthrough or whatever else, whatever we need to get through. <laughs> okay, look at verse, uh, look at verse 37. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you a drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in, or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say, Surely I say to you, and as much as you did it to the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. Jesus? Wow. So, I made a note this years ago. It's very possible that I am walking right by opportunities to minister to Jesus when I don't minister to you. He said, well, if you've done to the least of these, my brethren, my brethren, you, you minister to me. A lot of times we have a lot of opportunity to minister to Jesus. And we can, we can get so caught up, we can walk right past Jesus. Be warmed and be filled, Jesus. I got stuff to do. He said, if you do that's how tired he, that's how, how connected he is to us. That's why he said, whoever bless you, I'm blessing them. Because they blessed me in the process. But I was in prison. I was sick. I was on the sidewalk. Whatever. He said, he said, listen, don't walk past opportunities to bless Jesus. Yeah. Because this is the doorway. So, you know, I, you know, I think that, now, let me, let me back up. I know it's more than a notion because even the Bible says in 2 Timothy, in these days, people are going to be self-centered absorbed you know it's gonna be all about it so what I'm talking about is not easy because we're that the, the environment is pregnant with it it's pregnant with it it's all about you know us and and and, and my the way to get your family on track is to go help somebody else's family get on track that's the way it is you always reap what you sow always you don't reap where but you always reap what always you want to get well? The Bible says in Psalm 41, he said, he said one of the ways that you can get up off your sick bed is to go help the poor. Yes. Now, that's a promise. Go help the poor and you'll get up off your, God said, I'll raise you up off your sick bed. Yes. It's always, there's always, the, you, you, can, you don't get heat out the fireplace until you put something in. Right? right, right. So we don't want to, saints, saints, we don't want to sit around and just, and just, you know, sit around but not be useful for the kingdom. There's a lot of opportunity to minister to Jesus every day. And what I'm just trying to do is to get you, your mind set on the fact that I need to, I need to align myself with God. I, now, I need to be aligned with God. I need to be, God, help me make, get my alignment straight. I got out of line. And my wheels are wobbling. So we're getting a, an alignment, an alignment today. Yeah, and so we don't look to the left. I don't care. I'm going to tell you something about me. And, and I was thinking about this. Um, one thing I've been able to do is block out. I can block out. I'm going to talk about this. We, we're going to have an impartation service in a couple of weeks. And I was kind of looking at that, and, and you know, we're going to do some things today. And um, there's, a, there's a power. The Bible lets us know there's, there's a transference that God can use somebody to, to bring a gift or, 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 or something into your life that you haven't had. One of the things, and my pastor laid hands on me and Deb about 20 years ago, and uh, one of the things I got from him was the ability to focus. That man focused. I never seen anybody. He's 84 years old now. I never seen anybody that could focus and block out distraction, even when it hurt. Well, I, I think I got that when he laid hands on me. I can focus. I love everybody, but I'm not. If you don't do it, that's your business. I'm. I'm. I'm once I make up my mind, it may take me a little while to make it up, but once I get on track, I. Uh -uh. 
I ain't, I ain't moving. I ain't moving. I don't care what everybody else is doing. I, I don't care about popular opinion. I make up my own mind. I do my own thinking. Me and God. But, but I'm going to focus. I'm going to focus. I don't care how many folks quit. I'm going to focus. And so one of the things here, I mean, especially when I became a preacher, I like, you know, and I realized you can't, do, you can't let folk drive you. The congregation. Because congregation can put the brakes on you. Or they can drive you off and down a road you ain't even called it to. But they just want it. If you're not careful, you just do it to, to keep them pleased. Not friendly. <laughs> no, I, I, I learned how to focus. And I, I got a preacher friend. Well, how are we doing it? I, that ain't what God told me. I'm saying that because if you can focus and keep God first at any cost, it always pays off. Sometimes God will ask you to do something and it looks like an unfair exchange. God, this is costing me too much. No, God is lining you up. God will never, ever be in debt to you, especially when it comes to being a blessing to people. Well, Pastor, I'm going through. You're the perfect one. Find somebody that's going through worse than you. Well, Pastor, it's hard. Find somebody that's somebody that's harder. And I, I tell you, I, I say this all the time, I, I always talk about it. When I go to the hospitals and, 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 and see people suffering, and, and I see, I remember one time, the last time I was at the hospital, I saw this baby. The baby, I think the baby was maybe, I think the baby was maybe, I don't know, I'm not good with estimating, but it wasn't old, couldn't have been no more than five months old. But the baby had a, I guess they had something wrong with his legs, and, and they had like casts all over, half his body was like that. I'm like, oh my God. You know, it's like, wow. And so compassion hits you because you're like, wow, that's not so the will of God for that baby. And, but you sit in those environments, you're like, wow. And one thing that happens, you, it causes thanksgiving to come out of your heart because you, because you can walk, you walked in and you're going to be able to walk out without oxygen or without, without assistance. It's, man. And so now it's like, okay, God, how can I? Show me what I can do. Sometimes it's just saying a word. It's just going to sitting with somebody. Just sit with them. Sit with them while they're getting chemo treatments. Just go sit with them. Off of the drive. Let me, can I drive you home? I'll come get you. People are hurting, man. Listen, we, don't, we got a lot of customers, y'all. A lot of customers. People are hurting, and, and there's no shortage. And, but sometimes all we have to do is engage them, and then we realize, I'm telling you, and people will, don't mind talking about it. I mean, I mean, from the wake, we had, yeah, yesterday, yeah. And people want to talk about it. They want to talk about their problem, but that's okay. God sent us here, and he plants us to take care of them. You know, I laugh sometimes, but it's not funny. Sometimes people want Getting a job, man. These people on this job, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. It must be. This must be. These must be the, the devil children, demon children, demon children. These people in my work. Well, God planted you there. You got the wherewithal to take care of all of that. Within you is way stronger than what they coming in there with. So maybe God sent you in there to bring some order, not to complain. That's what they do. God, God, I want a breakthrough. I want a breakthrough. Okay, I'm going to transfer you. <laughs> I'm going to transfer you to this section. Ah, ah, that ain't God. You said you want a breakthrough. You asked God to direct your step. He just did. Because you got what's in you. You have the wherewithal in you to take care of it. Yeah. I know this is not a shouting message. But it's a good one. That's absolutely right. Okay. So Jesus said, Jesus said, don't walk past me. Don't neglect me. Come on a minute to me. Now, let me, one last scripture. Let's go to Galatians 6, please. Glory to God. Well, yeah. Well. See, because I, I, okay. Yeah, go, go on over there. I can, I can put the. I can do this. He says, as we therefore have opportunity, let us what? Do good. Especially 
especially to the church folks. A lot of people run from the church folks. <laughs> They're like, oh, I ain't trying to be around them church folks. Well, that's that's a that's a that's an added blessing. That's why I said especially do good to everybody, but especially you ought to have your hands. That's why I think everybody in the church, y'all amaze me. I mean, some people amaze me. Now, <laughs> some people amaze me because they're like, I ain't getting involved in the church. Okay. So there's an opportunity. Now, I, um, I was reading Lynn's Lighthouse bio. Now, this is, this is, this is, maybe because it's her day, but I remember when she came here. But she, she did clean, cleaning ministry. She was on a witnessing team, pastor prayer team, prison ministry, rescue mission, abuse recovery, pre-service prayer, women's ministry, singles ministry. She volunteered in the office. And then outside of church, she was a standing, for, standing together against rape women. She was doing a crisis line. She would get called in the middle of the night, you know, because rape don't occur between 9 and 5. And so she would... So they would call her in the middle of the night, middle of the morning, and then she had to get up and go to work. Two hours sleep. Two hours sleep, maybe no sleep. And you have opportunity, what? Do good. Um, Habitat for Humanity, American Cancer Society, Relay for Life, Catholic Social Services, AWIC. What is AWIC? AWIC. Awake? What is that? Oh, I thought that's what the, oh, that's for women with violence? Okay. Yeah. So, why are you saying that? Well, that's one, one reason why cancer can't come back. That's right. <laughs> it, it can't. Impossible. But it's also why opportunities have opened that she couldn't in the natural get open. That's her, 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 she's not, she would, as people say, she's not qualified for the things that's flowing into her life now. But she is qualified because God's looking on the heart. And so I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I you know, it, so it doesn't surprise me what's happening. Now you say, well, why are you pointing her out? Because she's getting ordained today. Because one of the things, you know, I haven't ordained anybody in a while because a lot of ministers, a lot of people who want to be ordained, they, not, they don't qualify. You can't be a minister if you can't serve people. Oh man! No, you can't be a minister if you can't love people. If you got, if you pick, if you can't get your hand dirty, or you know you're too good for that, you can't be no minister. Not God minister. God will not anoint that. God wants people that's like, listen, whatever it got, dog it take. <laughs> got dog it. Got dog it. Yeah, so what, whatever it takes, you know, I mean, team player, listen, listen, all hands on deck, that's the way we do it in the kingdom. We don't sit back and like, well, I don't know, I ain't got time for that. You got time for it? You have time for it. But, but a minister is really, the word minister means servant. Jesus said you're, you're, the one who serves the most is the greatest in the kingdom. The one who serves the most. So, so I just want to put this in your heart. We got to answer the call to servanthood. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying you don't have to do all of that, but, but, but there's something that people ought to love to see you coming. Yeah. Why? Because there's something that flows, that river of life flows. God, you got, we got all this power, the Holy Ghost power. For what? For what? It's not just to make us feel good and, and, and wiggle. It's... it's in fact, you really won't see the demonstration of it until you get in a position with somebody that don't know what you know. Needs a miracle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I say more, you know, we, we just saw a miracle. I just saw it just maybe about three weeks ago now. Yeah, because I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, I'm here, man. I'm like, God, I'll go wherever you want me to go, do whatever you need me to do. I'm available. 
And sometimes, sometimes you go in a situation like, oof. Okay, Jesus, you got this. You say you in me, right? Okay. <laughs> you say that you doing the work, right? Because this is tough. But that's what he said. He said, listen, he said, man, you born for this. I need to tell you, I'm born for this. I feed off of chaos. You got to tell yourself that. I'm born for this. I'm born for this. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead, he, he's in me now. I'm born for this. I'm born for adversity. I'm born for what seems looks impossible. I'm born for it. Okay, I probably better. I probably better. I probably better. No. That's the situation you do. You're born for it. Quit asking God to get you out of it. He wants you to go through it. He wants you to go through it. Deal with it. Go through it. Use the, you don't have ability. That's why he said, listen, he said, it's God who that worked in you to what? Will and to do his good pleasure. He wants everybody out. My God. All right. I think I'm, I think I'm going to shut it down right there. Glory to God. Uh, and you know, one of the things I found out that when you're busy about God's business, you don't have time to sit around and rehearse and, and magnify stuff that you're dealing with. You just, you just don't. And uh, it keeps you in a place. So I, I want to encourage you um, to line yourself up. It's just divine alignment. All right? Amen. Let's pray over this. Let's, let's, let's receive this. If you can receive it, it will transform your life. It will change your life. It will cause you to be healthier. It, everything. Everything. I mean, the grass looks greener. The rain looks rainier, wetter or something. I don't know, man. It's, God is good. It's time for some things to turn around. It's time for some things to turn around. Father, I, I do believe uh, that you gave me this today. But, and I believe that it is time for things to turn around. There's people listening to me. And they, they, they're wondering, and why are we going through this over and over? And part of, your, part of the deliverance, part of the breakthrough is in the obedience of the instructions. And so I pray, as I told you, over this church, that it is not a dead sea, that it doesn't become a dead sea or remain to be a dead sea, but that there's an outflow of the power and the love of God to minister, to help people, to make Jesus known. So I thank you for that, Lord. I thank you for the privilege you've given me. I don't take it lightly. I don't take it for granted. And so, Father, I pray for every person under the sound of my voice that they would look, or even those that you've already spoken to and they just chose to neglect it, I pray in Jesus' name that they would receive what you're telling them. doesn't matter how hard it looks, but that they would receive what you're telling them because on the other side of their obedience, is the move of God that they're looking for. And I ask you to help us stay focused and keep, keep our attention. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. We step back that you may step forward. And it's in Jesus' name that we bless you. Now, before 